When the, when audition when I found out about the audition, uh, so I'm a musician, so I was actually chasing music more than than acting, even though I grew up uh, as a musical theater kid. So I thought I'd be on Broadway uh, growing okay. up as a, as a right. theater kid. Um, <laughs> This is the Real Vibe Podcast. All right, welcome to the Real Vibe Podcast, Aaron Jacoby. How are we? Stuff. Hey, man. I forgot to do that part. We're keeping that in. We're keeping We're doing that it. in. That's how we started. Hey, man. How are you? Uh, Malik Yoba is on the yep. show today. Thanks for coming, Malik. I feel how like are you, man? You guys are ganging up against me. Why are you sitting so close? I'm, I'm far away. Where it's, it's, it's the camera it's angle. Two shot. It's I mean, a, if you want to come they're over. They're holding here. you in the two shot. Yeah, the two yeah, shot. Okay. I don't know what that means. Uh, uh, two shot. You two do. shot. Yeah, two shot, man. <laughs> if, people, but if you want, that's you can a, come that's over That's your three shot, and that's a single on me. You you deserve the single. Depends. Story career. Pop culture icon. I believe that. 90s kids. Favorite character in one of their favorite movies? Uh, yeah, and and adults and the parents because we all got old now. Well, that, that too. <laughs> when I'm a '90s kid, I'm <laughs> yeah. 38. No, I mean the parents that took the kids. Mm -hmm. That's a great. That's a great point. Yeah, you, mm -hmm. What you guys created with Cool Runnings is a movie that I can honestly say they say family films. They throw that word around a lot. It's a real one though. But yeah, yours, 30 years. Yeah, yeah. It's 30 years yeah, this man. year. Yeah, you'll have like entire families come up to you and say. We watched this movie as a family a hundred times, like real shit. It's in, it's incredible, and it, it is aged incredibly well. Uh, it's, there's uh, not a yeah. lot of movies that you could say that stand up for thirty years. Yeah, we and just still watched watch it. it. Just came from. A I just watched it because yeah, I knew you guys were yeah, coming just, in. Just, what, how many times? No, did we you? just watched it oh, today, you did? like right before here. Wow. Nicole Wallace, MSNBC uh, anchor, had uh, rent out a private uh, screening room for her thirteen year old. He t he turned twelve. Liam. Um, what's up, Liam? Nice to meet you, kid. Um, he turned 12. He turns 12 on, on Thursday. So she rented out the theater, brought the cast in. He saw the movie for the first time a year and a half ago. He's watched it 13 times. 10 times with his dad. He's wow. dad just told me today. You're telling me there's a 12-year-old kid somewhere who has watched. No, not somewhere. Right here in New York. Who has watched the movie. He's right outside. We left him outside. <laughs> he well, been watched it. it. Yeah, yeah. He watched it with what? the cast. Yeah, today. He just lived every Can you imagine that life? old nightmare. Like, well, that that would have been like the equivalent of me watching Star Wars. With right, Russian, right, yeah, right. And Harrison Ford and wow. Mark Hamill. Wow. And, yeah. How many times a day does somebody come up to you and... Every day. Say, I'm not yeah. kissing you. I'm not kissing you. Oh, not that. Right. Well, let me let you finish your question. <laughs> what, are they, what, what, what is the thing that people come up to you Depends, and... man. It's a lot of work out there. Right now, it's uh, First Wives Club because it's been trending mm -hmm. on, on Netflix. So people get to see that. Um, uh, which is fun, um, but not nah, cool runnings every day. New York gonna cover cool runnings, but it depends on the age, the demographic, depending on who it is, whether it's Arrested Development, whether it's for why they get married. New York gonna cover, you yeah. know. So I ran. I but saw probably it. cool runnings in New York gonna cover more than anything. Now, what are you yeah. what are you working on currently yeah. that you're excited? about? Working on my tan. Just came. From <laughs> so yeah, good. That's it. You, you like it? Is it even? Like, is it even? Did you so, just come back from vacation? I just you, you, I just came back from Jamaica. Oh, you came back yes, from stop Jamaica? Stop it. Yes. <laughs> I, was, I was on the Welcome to Jamrock Reggae Cruise that Damien nice. Marley does. If you love reggae, if you've never gone, Big reggae definitely reggae. check yeah. out the Welcome to Jamrock Reggae Cruise every December. So it was it, today's the 10th? Yeah. Yes. Yes, today's the 9th. Came back. It was the 4th through the 9th. Um, leaves Miami, goes to Falmouth, then Ocho Rios, then comes right. back. So it's basically a reggae con uh, festival on the water. But they nice. screen Cool Runners three times a day. Were you into reggae before the movie? Wow. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. So when you huh. when you did the movie, was it kind of like, hey, I get to do, participate? So in yeah, when the, when audition, when I found out about the audition, uh, so I'm a musician, so I was actually chasing music more than than acting, even though I grew up uh, as a musical theater kid. So I thought I'd be on Broadway uh, growing okay, up as a, as a right. theater kid. Um, but music, you can control your destiny a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So, could so did your parents in get you into it, or did you get into it? Is it a family thing? What, music? Or, yeah, yeah. Uh, my father was a jazz musician, so there was, ah. was a guitar in the house growing up. And he'd have his buddies come over and play, and then we still had music 
programs in school, and then I started playing guitar as a kid, and then junior high school, I was in a band, a rock band, actually. Um, what was the name and, of the band? Uh, what do we call ourselves? Because um, I got kicked out the band. <laughs> Fuck you, Mark Seiden, <laughs> uh, kicking me out the band. <laughs> yeah, happy Hanukkah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so the band is called Fuck You, Mark. He, <laughs> nah, well, what do we call ourselves? Um, uh, so, yeah. See what happens when you kick people out the band, Mark? I completely forget. He, he, he loves really telling forget. that story, too. Still, And he's still one of my best friends to this day. Um, so fuck you. Um, but um, so so I was I was pursuing music. and um, But, yeah, man, I, I would just uh, play out in, in coffee shops and the subway, that kind of shit. So, yeah, yes. man, um, forever. So then how does how do you audition for – how does that come about? Cool runnings happened. Um, shout out to my brother Jamal Joseph. Uh, Jamal Joseph wrote a film called Seriously Fresh, which is actually the first film I did in 1989. Um, and that came about. Um, I used to run a youth program called the City Kids Foundation. So awesome. Um, City Kids had a theater, like a repertory company, but I was more of the administrator and facilitating workshops. And see, it all goes down to, I didn't want other people telling me when I can work. So the acting thing for me was like, nah, I ain't gonna, if I have to rely on you to tell me I'm good enough for your thing, I don't wanna do that. All right. So working with young people, um, by 23, I was the vice president of the City Kids Foundation. Wow. So I had a lot of responsibility. Um, I was designing and facilitating workshops, working in schools, using art to engage young people. And I found out about an audition uh, in the summer of 1989 for a film that Jamal Joseph had written and auditioned for that film. And if I found out about like open calls, I would go. Uh -huh. But I wasn't trying to like, right. go get an agent and figure it out. It's like, oh, they're doing this audition, you know, and having gone to performing arts high school um, or one of the one of the high schools I went to had a performing arts program. I'd hear about things, so that's yeah. how I'd pursue, if I pursued it all. But anyway, working at City Kids, find out about this audition, um, I go get the film. Jamal happened to have been in the Black Panther Party, and he did 10 years, um, and he had just gotten out of prison um, when he had written the film. And so, running the youth program, I said, hey man, I run this program, I want you to come talk to my kids during sure. Black yeah, History yeah, Month yeah. about your role in the Black Panther Party. He also happened to be Tupac's uh, godfather. Um, and funny enough, Tupac auditioned for Cool Runnings, but that's a whole other story. Wow, um, that's a cool little yeah. thing to know. My mind just um, went. And so uh, Jamal, and stay with me because I know I'm jumping around, but Jamal, um, he came down to City Kids during Black History Month. We ended up hiring him to help okay. run the theater program. Jamal is the person who called me on some random Saturday afternoon in 1991 and said, hey, man, they're doing this movie about the Jamaican bobsled team. Why don't you call this woman Jackie Brown um, and go down to SOB, which is a club in Lower Manhattan called Sounds of Brazil, okay. and audition. So it was an open call, and I went. And for my audition, I wrote a song um, because every Jamaican has a song in their heart. So in the movie, the enough people say, no, they can't believe Jamaica, we have a bobsled team, we have the one Doris and the one Junior, Yul Brenner and the man Sanka, the fastest of the whole are Jamaican sprinter, go to Olympic, fight for Jamaica. So I wrote that for my audition. So I pull up to, <laughs> I, to the this audition. This is insane. And, and so it was an improv, and they said, so we want you, you're a track star, you ran a race, go, celebrate. So I pulled the song out. And that was part of my audition. Two months later, I get a call from Disney say, hey, can you come to L.A. tomorrow to screen test? And that's how I got the movie. So, and did, what crazy. Did you, what wow. did you think first day on the set? So, uh, well, when, when that happened, um, so we, had, we screen tested, and that's when Tupac, every, every, if you were black, and you worked in Hollywood, you got an audition. <laughs> they don't care if you're 15 or 55. Because you saw everybody from fucking Freddie Boom Boom Washington, from Welcome Back Cotter. Everybody to wanted in Tupac, on this. Omar Epps. Well, Hollywood was trying to find four black guys for, for a movie. Okay. you know, And Disney, right? So that wasn't 
you know, there weren't a whole bunch of movies with four black young black men. Oh, the answer yeah. is none. Uh, the answer is yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Not, 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 well, there was a couple. Disney I mean, wasn't you had you know, anyway. Juice had come out. In yeah. fact, yeah. the same director, I mean, casting director from Juice, casted right. uh, Cool Runnings the first time. A woman named Jackie Brown. So she uh, brought in Tupac from that movie. She brought in Omar Epps. Yeah, I think Khalil uh, Kane auditioned for it. Uh, Jeffrey Wright auditioned for wow. it. Um, yeah, anybody who was in, you know, they they auditioned for like three or five thousand people or some shit like that in, wow. New, in New York, L.A., Toronto, and London for 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 Cool Running. And yeah. the guy who wasn't that sure he wanted to do acting. Got no, I was sure. I, I love Warner. acting. I, I I love the the craft. I just didn't like the business of it. Right. You know, the, the business of the movie of, making stuff. Yeah, the idea that, like, you know, because I, 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 working at City Kids and just being in the city, had a lot of friends that are active, and you see them beat the pavement. And a lot of them have gone on to become successful. But that beating the pavement part, I, I wasn't that interested in that. So, But music, I could perform and do my thing, you know? So. I, I, we, were, we were watching it again the other night, uh, my wife and I and hadn't watched it in forever. And I did not know that me knowing who that it is odd that your name is Yul Brenner mm -hmm. in the movie is apparently a deep cut thing that not a lot of people know where the reference comes from. Oh, from the King and I. Mm -hmm. I, I thought everybody knew that. Yeah, yeah. I grew up mm -hmm. a theater nerd. Right. My mom yeah. was and mm -hmm. I, I I oh hey, it was in what the original Westworld. Like I'm yeah. like name and my wife is like I don't who? Oh, your wife didn't know. No, she, she didn't make that connection. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so I th I started thinking. I I asked some friends who yeah. I know are not with my last name because my brothers all knew, and they were like, I I don't know who that is, and I'm like, I just love <laughs> that I have this nugget Knowledge. thing that, that, that no yeah. that no one yeah. knows yeah. Uh, that it's an oh it's homage to one of the great. That's why I had a ball head. Uh, yeah, one of the great actors of a generation. Yes, sir. So I, I thank you for the comp. Oh, you mean? Yeah. I, I love that you like everything down to being bald. It was it was this very cool thing, and yeah. I I think what what I connect with the the character that you brought to the screen is the dream mm -hmm. that he has that just seems so out there compared to where he is mm -hmm. in life and what his current situation is. I think there there's something about that. That's everything, bro. Like, I wanted to bobsled and go to the Olympics as a kid growing up in Harlem. I saw the 1980 Olympics in Lake Placid for the first time. I saw bobsled. I was like, man, I want to do that. And then 1993, 13 years later, I'm on set in a bobsled uniform at the Calgary Olympic Park about the bobsled That's crazy. in real life. So that idea of being able to see things that don't exist except for here. And then, you know, even though in that case I wasn't really focused on it, right? So that's an interesting, you know, aspect of just that manifestation. But the intention, uh, the, the ability to, to dream and to see things even though they're not in front of you. I mean, we talked about your religious background off camera. But that whole life thing about faith. Right. And, and, you know, people being able to manifest things and not really understanding the secret sauce, which is the belief. Yeah. Like, I'm going to do that thing, you know. So and sometimes it's innate. Right. I gave my teachers my autograph when I was 13. I said, I'm wow. going to be famous. You should keep that. <laughs> but it wasn't it wasn't about like ego. It was just about like That's my life awesome. matters and I'm going to do some shit. And it wasn't necessarily on film or television. It was just this idea. It's it probably there. more music related to be honest with you um but there was a sense of like my life is going to make impact yeah on the planet and so you should know that so here this is for you and miss donowitz kept it my ninth grade english uh uh seventh grade seventh grade english teacher wow still yeah still she well she it got stolen so <laughs> she she so when i did new york on the cover i did an interview and i talked about that and she happened to be watching the news, and she recorded it, brought it to school the next day, the, in, the video, VHS of oh, the interview, no. showed it to her students, told that story, and then showed the autograph to one of the students, and then she told me that a kid stole it. So we, Ms. Donowitz um, <sighs> came to my 30th birthday party. Like, we stayed in contact. I used to have a restaurant five blocks from here, Soul Cafe, and she showed up at my 30th birthday at my restaurant 
And she told me that story about, you know, the autograph Somebody being stolen. Stole so I kind of believed her. But why would she lie? <laughs> I'm in Puerto Rico, 2009. A woman comes up to me on the dance floor. She says, hey, did you go to Wagner Junior High School? Did you have a teacher named Miss Donowitz? And she told me the story of Miss Donowitz coming in and showing the videotape and someone stealing the autograph. She was her student during that time of New York Undercover. And I was like, she really kept that? She was like, yeah, she had a whole closet full of things that she kept from former students. So it wasn't just my autograph. Right. She yeah. kept a bunch of shit. And then a few years after that, on Myrtle Avenue in Brooklyn, dude comes up to me in front of a bodega. Like, yo, you went to Wagner Junior High School. You had a teacher named Miss Donowitz. He told me the same story. Wow. Well, that's unbelievable. Yeah. Wow. And she, and she she just believed in all of her students yeah. and was just one of those teachers. Yeah, 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 for sure. And everybody needed one of those teachers. Yeah, did. That's why you you probably have one. Yeah. I Who do. was your teacher? And you remember the, the name, right? It's yes, Miss Bobo. I why? wish I was making that last name up. Why, why, why was Bobo. she that person? Second grade, uh, I just didn't see the world the same way other kids did and struggled in school. She was the first one that was gonna, it was like, it's this is going to be okay and you're going to do big things. She saw you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you? You didn't go to school. I did. I got <laughs> kicked out of a lot of schools. Uh, I, I'll be sure. I went to f I went to four different high schools because of fighting. I went to three. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 my parents got divorced. I got moved around a lot. Uh, but a teacher that impacted me, probably Mr. Joyce. He was a social studies teacher. Uh, but at, at the time, um, like I told you, my parents were going through a divorce. I really didn't have anybody to talk to. He knew what I was doing, and not only was like he a, a good teacher and looked out for me while I was at school, but after school he would take me out for pizza go get a Coke, go walk with me, and he'd check in with me, you know, like, hey, how you doing today? I know nobody's here. To, and nobody was doing it at the mm -hmm. time, and my parents were too busy fighting over each other mm -hmm. to, like, not even pay attention to what they were doing. You were the only child? Uh, I, I had a twin brother. He passed away when we were 24. Mm. Uh, how do you hear that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, so it's been, a, and I'm 44 now, so it's weird. You know what I mean? It's like it's a whole other lifetime ago. People are like, I'm sorry. I'm like, that was so long ago, but it is, it is there. But yeah, Mr. Joyce, there was that teacher yeah. that, yeah. that, uh, yeah. You yeah. should. You the should. Do you me. host things? I do. I host a lot. I do a lot of hosting. Did you have the the, the follow up questions and the the prodding stuff? You've got. You've you've done some, some things where you're hosting things or so. You you've got that that thing. Yeah. I can. Yeah. I, I do it. So I got that thing. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what that's called. Thing, but but I do it. Man, I got that thing. You need a host to come up in your crib because he got that thing, got baby. That thing. You, yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but why'd you ask? What was what was the just you're good at it. Very no. good at it. You mean because I started asking you questions? Yeah, very mm -hmm. good at it. See, I flipped Took that. Took good yeah. control of it. Yeah. Well, no, nah, because I think <laughs> that's an important that's an important point. Let me make yeah. sure we get that. So 100%. it was Miss Donowitz and Miss Terrell. Miss Terrell was my fifth grade drama teacher. So okay. she gave me my first solo to sing in a show called Rowdy Kate. I played a character named Sheriff Sam, and I had a song called Tricky Pete Porter. And so she's that teacher that said, you kid, go sing that. And that's the first time I heard people say, I like your work. And I was like, what the fuck they talk work? What are they talking about? Oh, you like you had in a play. Like, when, a play yeah. when a play is over, like, I like mm -hmm. your work. But I, she, so she came to see me in school plays all the way to high school. Wow. So keeping those wow. connections with certain teachers. Yeah. What an awesome woman. What an awesome woman. Yeah. yeah all was. right. Uh, Real Vibe Podcast. Yeah. Malik Real Yoba. Vibes. Yeah, man. Talk about the vibes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, about vibes. More content coming from uh, more of the cast of Cool Runnings. And yep. Just a bunch of cool guys. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, man. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's, what the fuck are we doing? That's, That's it. it. <laughs>